Hey, it's Eric here, and today I wanted to introduce you to, if you don't already know, what boundaries are in CAD. I'm looking at a project that I did in a CAD course called Shortcut CAD. I'll leave a link underneath the video in case you're interested. I'm going to grab this drawing that we did in the class, and I'm going to convert it into 3D walls. And I might later go back and add some 3D piping and some ducting to it as well. What I've done is I've isolated the walls layer and I pasted them into a new drawing here. I've also created a second floor here just to show you how you would stack the walls. We'll also be using the extrude command in the process. So extruding is really taking uh, polylines and then stretching them up into the Z direction. So you get those 3D faces. To explain the boundary command, let's just zoom down on this column here. And we'll just type in BO for boundary. It's going to show us a dialog here where we can create either polylines from the boundary or regions. Now, a region is, is really a 2D type entity that can be shaded. In our situation, we just are wanting polylines. So we'll just keep it at that. We definitely want island detection on. So let me just turn it off and then I'll show you what it does when it's turned on. So if we specify the internal point, you can see that it's detected the middle piece here, but it has not detected the outer piece. So if I go back into the boundary command and turn this island detection on and press OK, you can see in this case, it's detected this island and then it's created two polylines, one on the outside and then one on the inside. Now, if I press enter, it's going to take the layer that you're on. And in my case, I'm on layer zero and then create those polylines on your current layer. So let's undo that. Now, if I click on these pieces here, you can see this is a polyline, this is a polyline, but we've got all these adjoining pieces and we want them all to be joined together. The join command would be the other way of doing this, but it would take a lot longer. We want to create these polylines all at once. So the first thing to do is create an outer boundary. So we're just going to create a rectangle here around this floor plan. And that's going to contain the boundary, kind of like what we did down here. So let's type the boundary command again. We'll pick the internal points, making sure that our island is turned on. We'll pick the point here. Then we press enter. Let's do the same thing for this side. Let's just move this polyline around this upper floor plan. We'll type the boundary command again then enter. Now we can erase this temporary rectangle that we've got. And we can also go into our layers. Let's type our layer command, LA. And then let's freeze this walls layer. We'll close it here. Now let's go into 3D view. We can just go over here and click this lower left corner and zoom up a little ways. If we pick this line here, you can see it's all one piece. And the same thing goes for all these separate pieces. So let's extrude with the EXT command and we'll pick everything here in sight. And then we'll press enter and we'll extrude this to nine foot one. Now you can see when we shade this that it's got these solid tops to it. So it creates this solid wall. The only thing left we have to do is calculate the header heights and the sill heights. It's just a little bit of work and I'm going to speed the video up as I do this. I'm going to show you how to do one. So we do a rectangle, we snap here and we snap here. And then we repeat that command by pressing the enter key. And we do another one here. We're going to extrude this one down two foot one. So EXT and then we're going to be going in a negative direction. So a negative two foot one. And this one, we're going to come up four feet. So let's extrude it. And then type four feet for the positive direction. And if we measure this window now, this window is going to measure three feet. Let me show you one more and that's the door. The door is a little bit different because we only have a header. So we're just going to type in REC snap to the corners, and then we're going to extrude this down a minus two foot one. 
Let me do the rest of these real quick while you wait. The inside one is going to come down two foot five because we want our header to be six foot eight. Okay, that didn't take too long. I did end up copying the pieces here from here just to speed things up. I wanted to show you though that as you zoom up and down, you can see the seams where these solids are coming together. We can get rid of that if we want by using the union command. That's the UNI command for union. And we'll pick this one here at the bottom. And that's going to just clean that up for us a little bit. And I'll go ahead and do that around all the windows here. Okay, I do see I have one here that I forgot. And then I have this door here that I still need a header. So I'll take care of this. And then I'll use the union command to join that with the other pieces. So now that I have my windows, I can add some flooring to the top here over these walls. The easiest way to do this is really to use this shape versus this shape, because this does not have the four corners like this one does. So I'm just going to create my rectangle. I'm going to type in EXT for extrude and then type in L for last. That's going to find the last piece drawn, which is the rectangle. You can sort of see it there. And then I press enter. And then the height is going to be one foot, just to keep it simple. So I can select the floor and move it with the M command from the end point here to the end point here. And then lastly, I can move this piece here. Remember, it's all one piece now that we've used the union command, so it's a lot easier to work with. So we'll type an M for move and then move it from the end point to the end point here. So now that we have all our window openings and walls created, I wanted to show you one last thing, and that's a little bit about transparency. So if we select everything in the drawing and we come over here, to the properties palette, we can set the transparency to a higher value. Now zero is being the appearance of being solid. And let's say 80% would be 80% transparent. And the reason why I'd bring this up, let me turn on all my layers here. I drew some piping and ducting previously to this video, just to save time. So if I unisolate those layers. I've drawn really just a partial, simple layout of the piping and ducting as an example. By setting that transparency, you'll be able to see through the model so you can see your schematic inside. I drew the piping and ducting using our MetQ utility inside AbbeyCAD. And AbbeyCAD is our 2D, 3D AutoCAD-like CAD application. I'm going to put a link to a video that shows you a little bit about 3D piping and 3D ducting below. If you need more information on that, I hope this video has been helpful. Feel free to always reach out to me. I can be reached at 888-271-7121, or you can email me at info at cadavenue.com. Thanks and have a great day.